don't care if people find poetry. Like, people, like, are like, we need to bring more. I don't give a shit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today I'm going to show you that people who are very up high in the traditional poetry academic world are saying the things publicly that I've been telling you that they've been saying secretly forever now, okay? Now, I know this sounds very conspiratorial when I say it like this, but a lot of people just don't think that this is how fucking the poetry world, the the publishing industry thinks And these words that are going to be said right now, that you're going to hear said, this is exactly why people are putting out, like when I say people, I mean big publishers, are putting out books by Instagram influencers. This is why Rupee Cower exists. This is why fucking that R.H. Sin fucking dude exists. This is why Lana Del Rey has a poetry book. And fucking James Franco and fucking Come See, Come Saw, somebody's mom, whatever. This is the reason why. The reason why poetry is not popular right now is because the poets have been saying things that the people who actually make money on selling poetry books don't fucking like. And some of you are saying people have never made money on poetry books. That's why... Like, everything's made done by grants and by, like, nah. The fact that you can't see why what you just said to me is a huge indictment on what poetry is, is part of the fucking problem. Ugh. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to play a little bit of another podcast, and I hope they don't fucking lose their goddamn shit. Do I think they would ever talk to me about it? Probably not, because they don't know how to fucking return a fucking email or a fucking Insta message, leaving me fucking on red like we're on Grindr or fucking something. Fucking ridiculous, dude. But I will say this. It's an important thing. But it's an important thing that we're going to do. And I appreciate, I'm, I'm future thinking, or past thinking, however you do this, the guys at Breaking Form for allowing me to do this thing. Okay. So thank you guys. Breaking Form, I really enjoy their podcast. I really enjoy their banter. I do feel like they talk about the same poets quite frequently, but at the same time, I talk about the same poets quite frequently. So I'm not going to make that be a bitch of mine. I guess just because they are, I don't know, more educated than I am or more um, been in the scene longer than I have, that they would be able to broaden my scope. And I will say, I have discovered a lot of poets through them that I really thought I was going to like, and then I went out and got the books and ended up not liking them very much. So there's that. There's still... The, the jury's out on still a few of them, but but they're they're great. They're a lot of fun. So I don't want this episode to turn into a thing where I'm like, oh, breaking forms, bleh. You know, but I mean, I do think like this is just me being a little whiny bitch over here, but it's funny because like they seem like and if I'm wrong, guys, let me know the breaking form dudes. You guys know how to fucking find me. Okay, let's let's not be silly here. If I'm wrong about any of this, tell me I'm wrong and I'll fucking eat my hat here on my next episode. They seem to only want to kind of open themselves up to people above them. Like, they're like ladder climbers. And I mean this in no, like, disrespect. This is how academia has taught motherfuckers to be. So if there's people on, like, lower rungs of the ladder, you do not talk to them, you know? Because when Carl Phillips wasn't talking to them, they went on their show and bitched about it until Carl Phillips fucking talked to them. So here I am, bitching about them, not getting back in touch to me, and I'm going to be talking about them, and I hope they don't get mad, because I really fucking think they're cool motherfuckers. And I'm just, I, I just want everyone to know, I'm not the only one who Breaking Form has not gotten back to. I'm not the only one that Breaking Form, the guys from Breaking Form, have left on red. Just saying. Okay? So this isn't just me, like, well, I'm crying in the corner. No, this is a pattern 
of behavior. Okay. But breaking form is, um, they just put out their hundredth episode. Okay. So I'm nipping at their heels, dude. I'm nipping at your heels guys. I'm coming right up behind you. All right. So it's all good. And like, I'm really not, <laughs> it's so funny. I could never just talk about something without seeming super angry. Breaking form is a great show. I listen to it every, like, usually I'm up when it goes up at midnight and I play it first thing Sunday night, Monday morning, midnight, click breaking form. I'm listening to it. Um, it, I used to have a hard time because, um, breaking form and poetry says would come out on the same time, like roughly. Um, but Alice got lazy and now she puts her episodes out like late Monday into Tuesday. So, you know, now I just listen to breaking form like super early Monday morning. I am a fan of the show. I am a fan of their show. So please like, don't think that me coming across all fucking how I come across. Cause everyone thinks I'm always fucking mad at them and I'm fucking like angry. This is just how I am guys. This is just intense. You know, the way I talk right now, the way to describe it is the homeless population down the street. What is it? Intense. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, so let's get on with this thing. So, Terrence Hayes, this episode was released on July 17th in the year of our lowered 2023. Because Terrence has two books that just came out. So to speak, poems, watch your language, visual and literary reflections on a century of American poetry. Ugh. Yeah. I might read the the poetry book and see what that's like. Honestly, the more and more I read um, essays, it's like swallowing without getting to suck first, if that makes any sense. It's just... And then you're just like stuck with it, you know? It's kind of a bleh. Like, there's no fun in it. I just like, I don't know, essays, man. I'm just, I'm I'm not the audience for essays, let's say. Which I guess is okay, according to these guys. You think everybody writes one really great book, and then everything else they're writing for their community, like people they love to love the book. Do you, do you still say that? You think everybody writes like they're one great, and then everything else is like for their friends, the people they admire to be in conversation. You know, this will come back to this book stuff, too, about, like, book tours. But the first thing I'll say is I think I go between, like, poems and books. I think lately I think more about just relationships to poems so that we say that the mother. You know, I don't know that I remember the book that it came. But there are some good books, Book of Nightmares. But I think, you know, over time, you know, it's easier to convince people of things by reading them poems rather than telling them to go read books. I know I'm teaching I know that from teaching. So I do think people, so, you know, when I write, when I write, this is a side comment, but maybe this is still connected to what I'll say next. When I think about like my priorities, it is the poem, poetry, and then the poet. You know, I just don't really, you know, the poetry, the poet stuff is too, too delicate. There's all kinds of problems with you advocate first for the poet in that order of things that like I'm here first. I, yeah, I just feel like I am writing for people who are already looking for me. I am not writing for people who I am trying to like, wave down as they speed down the highway and I think like after a certain in any career I think the opera singers would probably say the same thing like if you don't know what opera is if you stumble on Maria Callas and you get curious I don't really have to mediate or curate that I don't have to like give you a commercial to make you want to come into the door if you stumble into it cool maybe you'll find us me you everybody else in anthologies in college Maybe you'll find one poem and that'll be all you need. That's all I needed. I I have read a bunch of other poems, but we still talk about one thing. So I still say like in most of these instances, you are, yeah, I don't know. I'm still just thinking about like my relationship to readers. Here's what I'll say. Not an audience. My readers are more like letter, people who read letters, you know, they can read it more than once. They can feel like it's just the two of us talking. We can go slowly. My audience, I know they can hear it too, but they got it on one time. They was looking at me and saying, oh, you know, he good looking or his head is messed, his hair is messed, you know, whatever. All the ways that we too get distracted when a person is in front of us. So I didn't sit alive. They're real people, but I think I do am more interested in my readers, people who will 
you know, have access to what I'm doing even when I'm not on the stage. I'm not trying to be a bestseller. I just want the people who already know what I'm doing and look at my typos and my stuff that doesn't make sense in the book and be like, that's fine. We're still Richard Terrence. The rest of the other people don't do that. The mainstream people are not like that. So I don't, I've never been interested in them. So, you know, I don't... I don't care if people find poetry like people like are like we need to bring more i don't give a shit like what yeah, if they as are. long as they love something that you know that they have a great yeah, life and they love something i say the same thing well, that we, we are right now the people that listen to this are the people that we're talking to yeah exactly so I'm like, I'm listen to it that's fine that's fine you know what I'm saying but i don't yeah so it's that idea of you know looking at who's in front of you and not looking over there this is where capitalism is again looking over past the shoulder of the person in front of you to the two people behind you i don't I just have never thought that that was good for art, you know, even if yeah. I understand. Okay, okay, whatever. Like, so there's a lot to fucking unpack there. But the main thing is, is that they, Terrence, the break and form guys, because they all agreed on this, they do not want to try to build the poetry community. They want the poetry community that already exists, that's already proven itself a dying fucking place. They just want acceptance from those fucking terminal fucking patients. And the thing I didn't like was that Terrence said something about capitalism. There is a difference between exposing people to art and being mainstream. I will never be mainstream because of who I am, how I write, the things I fucking say... And the fact that I call motherfuckers out when they fucking say dumb shit, okay? But at the same time, I'm always wanting to expand my audience. Because when you stop growing, you are dead. I don't understand why people can't get this through their fucking heads. But they're perfectly fine. I just want the people who already read my stuff to read my stuff. Well, that's really easy for someone who's fucking won all these fucking awards, has a fucking nice fucking teaching gig at a fucking fancy university and all this other fucking shit. But guess what? Not everybody fucking has that, okay? So if you want to settle and just be fine with doing whatever the fuck it is you're doing, that's great. Terrence Hayes seems like a cool motherfucker. I would love to just sit around and fucking shoot the shit with him. But I think he's fucking wrong about this. And anyone who gives two shits about the future of art needs to have this be a fucking priority that we all fucking talk about. How to grow fucking... And and the fact that he fucking, like... He's like, you know, it's the same thing. Like, I'm sure, like, an opera singer, you know... Has the same... Oh, yeah. Like, oh, my fucking God. Hey, what's the most fucking obscure art form you could think of to compare yourself to? And then you could, like, hit your wagon to that horse and just, like, hope that everyone, like, agrees with you when you say it. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I can't remember if it was James or Aaron who said it. They're just like, oh, yeah, like, I don't care, like, who reads my book. Fuck them. Like, or whatever. I'm just like, what are you fucking talking about? Okay, I'm gonna have to rewind it now because now I'm all fucking pissed off again. When I think about, like, it is the poem. Oh, I want to talk about this too. Let's talk about this real quick. Poem, poetry, poet. Okay? If the poem is your first thing you're worried about, that's good. We all agree that any poet should probably worry about the poem they're writing. And that should be their focus. But if your second focus is poetry itself... And you're not worried about building poetry to future generations to be bringing in new readers to poetry. If you're not worried about that, that's definitely not second on your list. That's not even on your list. And then the poet third, let's let you talk and then I'll just stop it and bitch. You know, I just don't really, you know, the poetry, the poet stuff is too, too delicate. There's all kinds of problems with you advocate first for the poet in that order of things that like I'm here first. No one is asking anyone to advocate for the poet first. No one's doing that, okay? We're just trying to make poetry popular. I don't know, like, what the argument is that you're making about all this stuff because I think you said, as an aside, this is what I think. So it's not exactly a answer to the question that was asked to you in the first place. But the thing that a lot of people don't get 
that the publishing industry does get in order to make fans of poetry, the big traditional publishers have been trying to make fans of poets, which is where Instapoets came from. Okay? And those people are popular. Those people outsell you by a significant margin. Okay? You might have awards and a place to teach. That's fantastic. But if people are not getting into poetry at all, each year that goes by, you're going to have less and less students because people aren't reading poetry. People aren't connecting to poetry because they're not connecting to poets. They're not being introduced to poets. The poem always comes first. But in order for poetry to exist as a whole, I don't think this could be a linear ladder. This is more of like a vomit splat word cloud. Poetry is in the middle. And then all the things that come out of poetry, if we want poetry to succeed, is the poems, the poet, the readers, the audience, the market, the bookstores, um, the places for people to read venues for people to be at places to sell your books besides traditional bookstores all of these things are important that have to be looked at you can't just assume that like you know the people who like my stuff are gonna like my stuff and you know that's it come see come saw bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt you know no biggie <laughs> you can't do that I, yeah i just feel like i am writing for people who are already looking for me i am not I'm writing for people who are already looking for me. <clears throat> this is going to sound weird, but that is a very privileged fucking thing to say. <laughs> okay, so you are so famous, okay, that you are only writing now for the people who have bought your last book. I, I implore you to look at your sales numbers because if I'm correct in this, any type of book series okay this is how it works your first book in a series okay let's say you have a thousand people this is just a number I'm throwing out there a thousand people read your first book when your second book comes out you will be lucky like seriously like fucking lucky as fuck if 80% of people who read your first book will read that next book. It's probably more like 40%. When your third book comes out, only about 30% of the people who read your second book, so 30% of the 40%, are going to read that second book. And it's going to drop down until about book five, book five or six, and then you will have your drops aren't going to be as steady but then when you have the last book the drop is just bam and you'll end up at like 10% of what the last number was okay so if we can pull anything from this stat if we look at poetry as a vehicle that is put together based on the poet so the poet is now the commodity because, like you're saying, you already have fans. And so you're only writing your poems to those people. But you said earlier that the poem is the most important thing. But the whole reason why people are buying your next book isn't because of the poem. It's because of your name. You don't need new fans. You already have them. So they're going to buy your book. Like, your existence proves my point. People are going to buy your book based on your name, not the poems inside it. You have reached the point where you are the exciting thing about a book of poetry. All right? And that's because you've been showered with awards and the whole fucking thing. Now, most poets can't say that. Okay? 
And their law of diminishing returns is worse because their numbers are much lower. So like Aaron's book, okay? Like like your like Terrence's book, like I already said sold a thousand copies. Aaron's book might have sold eighty. And I'm not trying to disparage Aaron or anything here. I'm just trying to paint a picture here. Because I think Aaron would agree that Aaron is not at the level of Terrence Hayes. Okay? So, if Aaron's book sells 80, and then his next book sells, I don't know, um, 40% of that first book, and then that book sells 30% of the last book, like, we're talking handfuls of copies here. This is not a way to run a business. This is not a way to even run a fucking 501c3 or whatever the fuck nonprofit shit most of these fucking small presses are. Okay? And if, if the nonprofit sector and grants and all this shit are just willingly giving money to people whose whole, like, existence has only proved that they do not know how to run a business then what the fuck is happening? Does no one see the problem with this? If you want poetry to exist 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, you have to actually try to get people to like poetry. Because guess what happened? In the last 100 years, if you were to take a pan and do this whole thing, it would show you the rise and fall of poetry's popularity Instagram like we already did a video on this and I showed you exactly on the chart when each social media thing came out so there was a dip when Facebook came out there was a dip when Twitter came out and then there was a big dip when Instagram started but then it started to go up and the reason why it started to go up is because people's interest in poetry started to grow so what did the traditional publishers do at this point traditional publishing said oh shit people kind of like poetry but not from these fucking academic whack jobs who think their shit don't stink they like all of these poems written by these people who have what 200,000 3 million follow 5 million follow followers on on social media and then someone's like, dude, if we could get 1% to 3% of those people buying the books, we'll be rich. And that's how it happens. It's not hard. This is so fucking stupid that I feel like I have to... Maybe I feel like I have to say this shit because no one listens to this fucking show. Maybe that's the problem here. I, I, I think I understood it. I come off a little too thorny for people who like could actually fucking benefit from hearing any of this fucking information. So here's the thing. If Terrence Hayes, if you ever hear this and you want to like have a talk about this and debate me on this or anything like that, breaking form guys, if you want to debate this topic and talk about how important it is to have no one ever know that you put out a poetry book. If any of you guys want to talk about this shit, and talk about the future of poetry, and talk about how academia and all this other shit is fucking destroying fucking poetry. Let's have the talk. I would love to fucking talk to somebody about this that actually at least assumes that they have a good argument. Something for me to sink my fucking teeth into. Because a lot of this shit, like, I feel like children could figure out. Okay? So, please. And anyone out there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually start hitting up, um big publishers and small presses and stuff and try to see if they have anything to fucking say since nobody could figure this out and again the selfish reason for me I want poetry to be big so I could fucking sell more books okay I already do better every month because I fucking hustle my fucking ass dude like fucking crazy I push I push I push Poetic Anarchy Press is pushing and pushing and pushing people on stuff. And I just feel like a lot of people, like I was just talking to a poet the other day who I'm going to start putting some of his stuff out. 
he had his stuff put out by a, a relatively big press for the small press world and got quotes from pretty fucking big names in this style of poetry for his book. And I'm like, so what did they do with the marketing? And he's like, they didn't do anything. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I don't know what they did. I'm like, you don't know what they did? He's like, well, I, I never, like, I think it got a couple reviews by people, but like, if I'm remembering correctly, those could have been just like people I sent the book to. I'm like, well, what did the book do with the stores? And he's like, I don't know. No fucking clue. Like, all of this shit should be fucking common sense. And I just don't get it. And now, a lot of people who listen to the show on the reg are probably like, dude, can you please fucking shut up? I'm so tired of hearing you bitch about this. But I'm bitching about this for you too, guys. I want you guys to fucking sell books. I want you guys to be able to fucking do poetry readings and have fucking motherfuckers come that are fucking paying to get in to see your ass. And no one's going to fucking do it if the industry itself doesn't fucking take this shit seriously. I got fucking heartburn now. I write it for people who I am trying to, like, wave down as they speed down the highway. Who is speeding down the highway? And why? Okay, this is what I don't understand. If you say, oh, yeah, you got to, like, open people's eyes to poetry, okay? The first thought someone has is, oh, so I'm going to be, like, on the side of the freeway and cars are going to be zooming by. And I'm like, here, read my poetry. Like, marketing is not that hard. Like, I don't understand why people... That's like... Every time you start talking to someone, you're like, oh, I'm supposed to do... And they say, like, the biggest fucking thing in the world. And it's like, no, it's like... Word of mouth, street teams, guerrilla marketing, social media marketing, email lists, etc., etc., etc. And you just build up and build up. I don't know. Whatever. Let's see. And I think, like, after a certain... In any career, I think the opera singers would probably say the same thing. Like, if you don't know what opera is, if you stumble on Marie de Callas and you get curious, I don't really have to mediate or curate that. Why do you feel that you shouldn't have to curate the thing that you are the fucking spokesperson for? You know? Like, why are you... Like, okay, let me ask you a question. <sighs> would a baseball player go into an interview and um, someone's like, so can you tell us about the game? No, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to have to, like, curate information for you so you understand fucking baseball. You know, um, I'm just a baseball player. And uh, the people who come to the games, like, I think those are the only people who should come to the games. Like, like if you stumble on a, a baseball game on TV and then you're like, oh, maybe this is for me, then I guess you could come out and see us. But, like, honestly, like... I shouldn't have to fucking tell you what fucking baseball is. The idea that <laughs> that Terrence is going from someone just stumbling onto poetry to him now having to curate something for them is fucking laughable. It's like Google. Hello. Like anyone can figure anything out at any time. This isn't hard. I don't have to like give you a commercial to make you want to come into the door. If you stumble into it, I shouldn't have to give you a commercial to make you come in the door. Have you ever seen anything in the world? And the thing that cracks me up, breaking form makes JPEGs like makes thumbnails specifically for Instagram for their fucking podcast. Okay. So they're putting time and effort into marketing their fucking podcast, but they're not going to fucking do that with their poetry. Fuck that. I'm not going to fucking do that. It's fucking ridiculous and like completely out their ass bullshit. Cool. Maybe you'll find us, me, you, everybody else in anthologies in college. Maybe you'll find one poem and that'll be. Okay. So now it's turning into a classes thing. Okay. Cause now hopefully you will find at least one poem in an anthology that you read in college. You totally just narrowed your fucking market down to one type of person. College age kids. What the fuck is that? Oh. 
all you need. That's all I needed. See what I, mean? I have read a bunch of other yeah. poems, but we still talk about one thing. So I still say, like, in most of these instances, you are, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still just thinking about, like, my relationship to readers. Here's what I'll say. Not an audience. My readers are more like letter people who read letters. You know, they can read it more than once. They can feel like it's just the two of us talking. We can go slowly. My aud- I don't understand this argument. His audience is not an audience. It's more like people who read letters. Like they're just two people talking. That's what every poet should feel like their poetry is to somebody else. That they're making a connection with someone. And just because you want to expand your audience and expand your reach doesn't mean that then you will stop being able... Because, like, I don't know, Terrence, like, you know that you're not actually there having a conversation with each person that's reading your book, right? It's just, like, they're feeling like they're having a conversation with you and reading your work. I don't understand this. I don't get it. Is, I know they can hear it too, but they got it at one time. They was looking at me and saying, "Oh, you know, he good looking, or his head is messed, his hair is messed, you know, whatever." All the ways that we too get distracted when a person is nervous. So I didn't survive. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, dude. Seriously, it's hard being this fucking sexy and like selling poetry. It's fucking hard, dude. Because like you get up there and you start reading, and suddenly people are looking at you like a piece of meat. And they're not hearing the words you're saying. They're just like licking their chops going, man, I cannot wait to get that in my mouth. You know? So I feel you on that. I feel you on that. But that's one of those things where I'm like, I'm going to take I'm gonna take one for the team on that one. I'm going to take one for poets everywhere. I'm going to allow myself to be eye candy so motherfuckers could sell poetry. It's okay. I'll, 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 I'll swallow that one, guys. They're real people, but I think I do am more interested in my readers, people who will, you know, have access to what I'm doing even when I'm not on the stage. I'm not trying to be a bestseller. I just want the people who already know what I'm doing and, and look at my typos. And- he doesn't want to be a bestseller. He just wants people who are going to look at his typos and go, that's okay. Aren't you like, don't your books come out through like a fucking university press? Why are there fucking typos in your book? Like, there's typos in my books, but that's because I'm a one-man operation. And I publish all the fucking time. And I'm fucking stupid. What's your excuse? Like, there shouldn't, this shouldn't even be a thing. Why, why do you think anyone's gonna, like, judge you on shit? You're celebrated. Like, what are you afraid of? And, like, you don't want to be a bestseller? Why? Yeah, that'd be awful. God, you know, one of the worst things I could think of... Oh, making money off of something I love. That would, that would suck. I, I, that's, that's not fun. I, stuff that doesn't make sense in the book. I'd be like, that's fine. We're still with your Terrence. The rest of the art, other people don't do that. The mainstream people are not like that. So I don't, I've never been interested in them. Poetry, here's how I'm going to say this. The steps that poetry is going to have to go through before it goes from what it is now to mainstream there's like a hundred steps in between that there are so many fucking steps it's probably not going to happen in our lifetime unless I'm really good at what I'm planning on doing guys other than that it's so not going to happen So, this mainstream audience that you think is going to be mad at you for not understanding what you're talking about and having, like, misspellings in their shit? Like, are you afraid of that? Are you afraid of, like, bad criticism? You're Terrence fucking Hayes! Jesus fucking Christ! That shouldn't even be a fucking issue. So, you know, I don't... I don't care if people find poetry. Like, people, like, are like, we need to bring more. I don't give a shit. Like, what if they, as long as they look. We are right there. From the horse's mouth. I don't care if people find poetry. Like, people, like, are like, we need to bring more. I don't give a shit. Like, what if they, as long as they love something that. People keep saying we need to bring more people to poet. I don't give a shit. Coming from the mouth of a poet 
who teaches poetry at university and has a podcast about poetry. Oh, and I bet they've gotten a grant for that fucking podcast. Almost guaranteed. Unbelievable. Hey, people who give grants out, stop giving grants to people who do not want art to grow. They do not fucking deserve it. They don't deserve anything. Okay? They deserve what they have right now. And that's it. Because that's all they want. They just said that. Okay? And I don't know if Breaking Form's gotten a grant. I'm just getting all upset now. But I'm just saying, darling, that that's how a lot of these people seem to be. And fuck, if I can't make just fucking broad sweeping generalizations on a podcast, what fucking am, what good am I? <laughs> that's all I'm here for, guys. I'm here to fucking make fucking stupid statements. Oh my god. Tough shit. I don't give a fuck. That was shocking. I, like, forgot he said it in such a... In such a horrible, horrible way. But, you know, like... And again, I am a fan of Breaking Form. Okay? I follow them on the gram. Okay? Terrence Hayes just put out two fucking books at the same time. It's like... Okay? So, he's obviously way up there. Like, he could do whatever the fuck he wants. I mean, the only other stupid motherfucker I know that puts out fucking two books, like, at the same time is, uh, ooh, me. So, like, I'm cool being on the same fucking level as Terrence fucking Hayes, dude. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. Hey, seriously, guys, if we can't fucking laugh at ourselves, like, what good are we? Let's quit taking ourselves so fucking seriously. But what I will take seriously is people not taking poetry seriously. Okay? And we have no one to blame for that but ourselves. And prior generations. At least the last three. Mm, two. We'll say two. Leaning on three. But anyway, so how long have I been running my liquor here? Okay, so let's just get into the butt plugs here. Okay? <laughs> So for the butt plugs this week, go out and pick up my new chapbook, Drinking Less. Only 45 copies available. The first 20 are signed. All 45 have a special, unique, different wine stain on the cover. So every single book is an individual collector's item. If you don't want to get the chapbook, the print version, you can get the ebook version or the digital version up on my Etsy shop. Or you could go listen to the audiobook for free on my YouTube channel which is just at Matt Wall. Bloodshed Review issue... I don't know when this episode's coming out. I don't know if it's August yet. It's gotta be, right? Let me, let me look at a calendar real quick. And also, keep in mind that later this month, or in August, the end of August, is going to see Poetry is Bullshit, a poetic anarchist guide to writing poems. Available on Amazon. Okay? So that will be a thing. Um, also, Winner Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry. I still have um, copies of the first edition of those available on my shop. And the audiobook for that is coming too. So that should be here pretty soon. So, I want to give a big thank you to all you motherfuckers over there on Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry, to Monse. You guys are awesome. Hugs and kisses. And then for you guys over in the YouTube, thank you, crew. I want to give a thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia, and to Lauren. You guys make me smile. And then for the sexy bikini bodies over there in the Anarchy crew, I want to give a big thank you to Buddy, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to Chase, to JH, to Jess, and to Jason. You guys are the thing that make me tingle in the morning. And then for the biggest of the swinging pendulums, I want to give a big thank you to the number one chappie over there in the chat book of the month club, Caitlin Sup. What's up? What's up? You're the shit. Hey, I just want you guys to know, I'm really wanting to start moving more people into the chat book of the month club. So, if you've been thinking, if you've been in any of the lower tiers, or even over on Patreon, and you're like, you know what? I really want more. I want to support more. 
and I want more bang for my buck. Anarchy Crew has over 150 videos that you guys don't see of writing tips, exercises, prompts, lessons, assignments, yada, yada, yada. Plus the weekly live stream, plus the weekly Zoom call where we all get together and write and do prompts and shit like that and then read what we're writing, the whole fucking thing. Chapbook of the Month Club gets all of that stuff plus everything I put out that month. Okay, sent to your home in some sort of package or envelope. It's just how it is. This is how we fucking do business here in the year of our Lord, 2023. This is how you do it. This is how you build an audience, how you build a loyal fan base. And I want you guys all to know that I fucking love and appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much. Fuck me, dude. Okay, so with that said, everyone go over and give um, Breaking Form a sub. Um, check out some of their episodes. Their episode Elegy is probably one of my favorite episodes that they've done. Um, and they do a lot of fun games. The games are really fun. They're, they're just, they, they just will crack you up. They're just fun. Okay. And go check out Terrence Hayes' books. Let me read the titles of them to you again. Um, actually, you could go get Aaron's book, Stop Lying. It's available from the Pit Poetry series. Publishers Weekly calls the book visceral, tender, and compassionate. James's book, Romantic Comedy, is available from Four Way Books. Writing in Lit Hub, Rebecca Morgan Frank says the poems have a gift for telling stories. Dot, dot, dot in acts of queer survival. Please consider buying your books from Blue Stockings Cooperative, a feminist and queer indie book selling co-op. You can get Terrence's books there too. So to speak, poems, which I'm actually gonna go pick up. And watch your language. Hey you, hey you. Watch your language over there, you. That's, that's to me because I've been cussing like a fucking sailor over here. Visual and Literary Reflections on a Century of American Poetry. It sounds good, but I just have such a hard time with essays. I don't know. I get really mad. Yeah, so that is that. So go check that stuff out. Support Poetic Anarchy Press. Support this podcast. Thank you so much. Keep buying our books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.